Hello, hey, hi. Hi, can y'all hear us? Okay, let us know. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Yes, welcome and thank you. Uncle Al, Cheryl, Happy Mac. Die Bullfrog. That's Uncle Al. <laughs> okay, okay, Uncle Al got two. Okay, my Renaissance Grandma. Thank you, y'all, for coming. We're going to be talking. You guys, make sure you get pen and paper tonight, okay? Hi, Lori Sanford. We're going to give people a little bit of time to see who all joins into the chat. Okay, y'all time to get y'all pen and paper. Go ahead, Bougie. You want to say anything, sweetie? Because I see most of the folks in here are from your neck of the woods. And I know I'm a prepper, but I'm not known for prepping like you're known for prepping. So let's welcome in those who are here for you. Thank you, um, guys. Thanks, everybody, for coming by. Um, can hear you well. Okay. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about preparing for the winter. We want to stay ahead of the game. It's still summertime. We still got warm weather. So we want to make sure that we get our staple things that we need to um, help us out in the wintertime in case of a power outage or something like that. Especially when it's off season, it's usually cheaper. So you want yes. to try to grab whatever yeah. you can if you mm -hmm. your budget now. Hey, QB. So the first thing we have is, is um, clothing. Um, we were talking off camera about um it goes along with this, this your source of heating when the when the um power goes out um you have your propane mr heater but you have to be careful with those type of things so um layering clothing should be the first thing that i i would suggest that you do is layer up on your clothing get some wool socks and a wool blanket and or either also a um, electric blanket that you if you have the the generator where you could plug in with uh i believe they have the car chargers you could plug it in with the car charger for electric blankets but blankets um um what we used to call them long johns yes but I didn't know you could plug the blanket into the car charger you could get it with that um piece on it that have they even have car blankets they're they're called car blankets is that an extra attachment or it comes automatically no it comes like that because it's made for you it's made for that purpose in case you got um stranded mm -hmm. and um you could i don't know how you would plug it in if the car is not running but it has the car charger on it on the end and um you could plug those into your um into your power <laughs> batteries that's great though welcome it's gma and papa great to have you here in the chat hi right, gma thanks for coming thank you for coming yes definitely long johns and you guys you can go to well i don't know like down here in florida it's a little different when it comes to like our dollar generals and family dollars but when i lived up in ohio in cincinnati when it was a, a much colder climate with snow and ice you could go to the dollar generals and family dollars and you could also get clothing there you could get socks you could get pajamas you could get your long johns you could get kids um clothing for your children at discount stores so don't worry about trying to go get no you know bougie stuff like just go and get what you need at discount prices so that you can layer up because it's really important to layer up and hey, welcome, David, Michael Farmer. Hey, What's David, up, Michael Farmer. Um, Uncle Al said also oh, USB yeah. plugs, too. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes, you and you know, um, another type of material that I found that's very warm is fleece. You they also have um fleece pants that you can you can get fleece pants and fleece tops. I've, I have a couple of those. Those keep you very warm also. 
You can get those from Walmart or you can get the real good stuff and go to like Goodwill. You know, keep all the resources open and available to your brain. I know most of us are probably already on that page, but we just want to make sure that those who aren't are here and writing these things down. So, you know, if it's something that we don't mention that you can think of, please continue to put that stuff in the chat for us. Yeah, and this is just, just some ideas to throw out there to, to help get you thinking about what you may need um, for the winter. Go and pull those things out now. Don't We don't want to wait until something happen and then you take the stuff out and something is missing something is wrong or something and don't smell too good and you don't want to put it on because it need wash because it was sitting put away for a while so pull your winter stuff out now <laughs> while we still got warm weather going on hey tlc hey tlc hi boo oh you know what i love dollar 25 tree always has hand warmers and foot warmers yeah those are good too the hand warmers yeah the hand warmers that's a good idea too oh yes the below 40 sleep bags thank you die bullfrog 79 yes you can get those at walmart i've been seeing them at walmart of course you can go to places like dick sporting goods and stuff like that but you're gonna pay a lot more by going to that store I'm not saying not to go to that store maybe i shouldn't be yelling out names and stores my apologies but make up your own mind okay just shop around basically oh and um happy max says you know those small fleece blankets i figure if i'm really stuck i can cut a hole put it on like a poncho yeah that makes really good sense too mm -hmm. you know um i keep a pocket knife on me i think that's good too all seasons yeah that should be a yeah edc your everyday carry a pocket knife i had to get used to doing that carrying a pocket knife every time when i went out and you know they have those um a matter of fact i have the what he's talking about like putting the arms through i actually <laughs> bought something that's made like that that way you could pull it over you and it has arms in it yeah, I have ponchos. Now, no. <clears throat> okay. It doesn't really apply to now. But every year, February, I believe, Ross, all over the country, has a 49 cent sale. Where, mm. like, they, they mark a lot of stuff down in their store for 49 cents. Clothing, shoes um household items all the stuff we're talking about okay i know i apologize that it's august now but just know this for even next year you know start planning ahead that's the purpose yeah of that's the whole point is getting ready now for those who are in i'm i think for everybody because i didn't get mine yet but snow is hitting everybody i just think about what happened to the people in florida and I mean, I mean, in Texas, you know, um, maybe those that didn't have shovels because they wasn't used to the snow, like even have a shovel. If you're not in an area that gets that much snow, just have a shovel anyway, because the, we we all are getting these crazy mm -hmm. weather that the we're not, you know, okay. used to and um, expecting. Um, you know, another thing we don't talk about is um, flooding. Um, yeah. I have, um, there's these, these. Um, I keep forgetting the name. I'm sorry when I, if I don't know, remember the name. My short-term memory sometimes don't serve me. But they are um, these bags um, that you could actually sit down in the water and it will soak up the water. Um, I think those are a good idea, especially... For the bathroom. Okay. Hey, Juicing with Jay, you could get them hey, for the bathroom and put them in the bathroom in case the bathroom starts to um, flood and um, you don't want to put all your towels and stuff on the floor. You could put these things down and they will soak up the water and, and also make a barrier 
for like where if you want the water just to stay in the bathroom or if there's a flood you can use these things to to um make the water go whatever way you want to go like steer it away from your house to go in a certain area i need to look up what these things yeah, are yeah i've never heard of that um, yeah find out what we that is we can get them in um the big box um stores what's the um what is like that like sam's club and stuff no the um the more the ones like more for your diys home depot and low yeah yeah uh-huh home depot let me see what it's called look it up real quick <laughs> not on my end david you might hear me over here smacking because i'm eating <laughs> I don't mean to be rude, y'all. My apologies. Water dams. I think that um, water dams. Cause you know you can use diapers to soak up water. <laughs> quick, quick dam. Hey, Kiki. What's They're it called? called? Quick dam. Uh, can you put it in the chat, or you want me to do it? In? Okay. Yeah. They're called quick dam q u i q u i hold on q u i c k dam where was i these are these are very good for um yeah quick dam yes uncle al quick dam sandbags those are very good for flooding. Like a lot of people has been suffering with the flooding. I think these would be very, we don't talk that much about flooding and what to do for flooding as um, far as prepping. Those quick dams would be very good to, um, to get. They can help, um, you know, contain the flooding. Hey, Kiki. Um, I think those would be a real good investment. Hey, Gina. Hey, Gina versus Gina. Yeah, I just shared the link, you guys. But a quick dam. Mm -hmm. okay. But it's just the link to Google. It's not the link to any specific right. site. Right, right. Um, okay, let's, okay, we talk about clothing, right? Um, Heat sources. Well, we talk about the blanket and um, if you have a fireplace, get your fireplace cleaned yeah. out and checked yeah. and serviced, mm -hmm. all that good stuff now while it's warm out. Go ahead um, and stock up on wood. Yeah. Wood, get the you wood. Do. Make sure you have your lighters. Um, when I say lighters, like a lot of the times nowadays you have to have the lighter log put in there make sure you have something your flint whatever it is that you're going to use to not your flint what's it called bougie let's make sure we're using the right terminology oh there's a flint there's there's also a flint the steel and flint and then there's the fair rod so it's two of them it's a cord would you you want you talking about the fair rod and the striker the one that i use no i'm actually talking about like if i was to use thin pieced out shreds of wood Oh, you're or, talking about your um the fire starter. Yes. Yeah, What's yeah, the your fire, fire starter starters. Is? Um those are yeah, well well no, yeah, yeah, magnesium, but be careful with magnesium. Yeah, something like yeah, something like magnesium, but any any well um kindling. That's kindling, the word. Yeah. Kindling. <laughs> Dur yes, yeah, yeah, kindling. Yes, Ken, thank you, Kiki. Yes, Ooh, my, you. my memory is not serving me tonight. Yes, well, you're kidding. Mine neither, but it's okay because it's a lot of us that don't know this terminology that's on my page that need to know this terminology. So, thank yes, you all. CLC, for your fat this. word. Yep, yep, your fat word. Make sure mm -hmm. you have your kindlings to start your fire. Okay. So is fat wood and kindling the same thing or not? Yeah, fat wood is a is a kindling. It helps with the fireplace to um, start the fire. It's a, a certain kind of wood that's just made for um, helping start fires. They call it fat wood. And okay. remember too, your cotton ball with the 
Vaseline. That's a, another kidney that you might, that you already might have on hand in the house. Um, dryer lint, but I don't care for dryer lint because you need something. Dryer lint burns very quick. It, I mean, as okay. soon as you light it, boom, it's, okay. it goes real fast. So you would have to have a lot of it. You need your kindling needs to at least burn two minutes or longer in order to um, get the other bigger pieces of wood to start burning. Hey, so Urban I Gardening. I really, hey, Urban Gardening. I really don't care for um, okay. um, dry lint. Okay. The Vaseline with the cotton ball. That's it, my it, fave. I'm not gonna. That lie. that one. That's a. That one is good. And the, the um dollar twenty five store. You could go and get the little jars of Vaseline and and you know the cotton bags of the cotton ball for the kindling for that. If you don't have none, that's something quick you could pick up and have in the house. And um some people do the the tent ideas um where you could um, go in one room and set up a tent so you could, um, you know, guess body heat. Everybody could be together with in the, the tent heat. in the house, you guys. Right. And, you know, or in a room or you could pick a room, one room to be in. Yep. Whatever's so that the everybody could be house. warm. Would be the smartest um, thing. Whatever's, whatever's the warmest room in your house. Right. Would, would be the smartest. You know what I mean? Just going to have to move some shit around. I'm sorry. You got to move some furniture and things around. That's okay. And then also TLC in the garden, she suggested plastic for the windows. That's always a go-to. Oh, thing yeah. I used to look yeah. At Covering up your windows. So, yeah. yeah, get some. Um, your tape and I your plastic. Some, like, I, would, I would say five millimeter or higher plastic and um, some duct tape or a staple gun to put it up over the windows to cover up the window kerosene heater okay um uncle al mentioned a flare gun the road flare lard with cotton balls as well okay mm -hmm. that's the same thing as petroleum basically not really yeah. but kind of um the propane heaters be careful with those if you yeah. have one um if you don't have to you i know places that's up like buffalo upstate new york i know y'all be freezing up there but if let that be or make sure you have some kind of ventilation if you um you have to go that route but be careful with your the propane when you're using propane indoors even though that um the mr heater is it said it's made for indoors but Still make sure you have some kind of ventilation and make it the last, your last resort. Also, do I know um, there's been some challenges where you um, cut off your electricity, but it, it's a good idea. Great information given. Great information given out here. Hope some writing this down to remember. Um, It'd be cold. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know, Kiki. You upstate. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, hey, hey Erica. Erica. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, what I was just saying. Um, I know I was saying. TLC also suggested roll up towels and blankets for like to put, put, put them under the door. Mm -hmm. Help with the draft. Yeah. Get you go to Home Depot too, and get you some of that. Um. That little white strip stuff, you know what I'm saying? That you can just stick stick on between your door jam. Well, you know, you have the, the, the door draft things too, that they have a roll on mm -hmm. one it's side and other side, and you yeah. push it on the door, and then you can open and close the door without having to move anything because those things are there. Yeah, you it know. slides on the bottom yeah, of the door. Yeah, slides underneath the door and it stays there. So you could just easily open and close the door without having to move. So they do have um, door draft things that you can put on the bottom of the door. Um, Uncle Al said weather stripping. That's it, weather stripping, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Um, yeah, Hi, Cheryl Cheryl says Hudson. candles. Hudson. My boo, to run with Hudson. What you were saying? Cheryl Faulkner says candles. Oh, yes, please. And that's another thing I'm saying. 
And be careful with your with your candles. Matches. Especially if you got um little people in the house. Be careful with your candles. Yeah. I always joke around. I said all my kids is young adults and I still don't trust them with the candles. <laughs> you know, get you a little saucer or something and put some water at the bottom of the saucer and then put the candle on top of it. That's always a little bit of an extra. I'd be worrying Buffer. about them, knocking them over. That's that's well, my you don't want to go to sleep with them on, you know. Yeah, but I mean, just you know, having them on and everybody moving around and the candle get knocked over. That's that's my thing. That's mm -hmm. the last thing you hey, want. Robin, to babe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's one of the number one issues that you have in the winter time when you have mm -hmm. maybe a power outage and you're trying to stay warm. Like you yeah. really have to be cognizant. Yeah. of the candles yes uncle i'll make sure everybody have their carbon monoxide monitors oh, check yes, the batteries yes. for your yes. smoke detectors if yes. they're not because most of ours is connected to our electricity so get a a separate one i have one that actually mm -hmm. you can sit on the table mm -hmm. so make sure you get a separate one from the system from the one that's connected to the, the yeah if it's connected to the electricity to your house or if um it's one that where if the electricity go off it operates by battery make sure the battery is good um pull out all your your flashlights and make sure that the batteries are, are good good in them get a battery checker so you could um check your batteries and stuff and get some stock up on some batteries you know, you try to get, you get some, good some get rechargeable good batteries, batteries. You can. The re yes, the recharge I, that's what I use. Rechargeable batteries are good, but um, you got to have something to recharge them, though. though these things, you got to think, Fact. you know, connected, what connects to them. If you get rechargeable batteries, then you need to have a battery to recharge mm. the battery. Get you a little solar panel if you can. Hey, um... A 200, 100 or 200 system is good for something like that. Recharging rechargeable batteries. Okay, so it's not a whole lot, but it'll help. Because a lot of times, like, okay, to be honest with you guys, I've been getting more into solar chargeable things. Mm -hmm. Solar chargeable flashlights solar chargeable lights, solar chargeable weather radio. Those are the things that I've been trying to get into. And dang, it was this app, you guys. Shit, I can't think of the name of that app. And it was the, one of the best apps. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Let me try to find out for you guys. Keep each of them. Yeah, that was, that was the next this, this discussion is generators. I know generators, when you sometimes you hear about it, it's, it's different types of generators. You got your propane generators. You got your gas generators. You have your um, solar generators. It's all according to what you want to use it for. And if you don't have one, that's the first thing you need to think about. What do I want to use it for? What do I want to keep running when the lights go off? That will help you um, to um, decide what kind of generator you want to get and what size generator you may need to um keep that um appliance like for instance for me the only thing i want to keep going is the um my freezer and the refrigerator so um i um have a um what is that brand i have a 700 solar power battery i call it a battery but it's, yeah it's a solar power battery that can run both the freezer that i have which is only a 55 i think it's only 55 um square unit and um a apartment size um refrigerator so that's like a medium maybe a, a medium size um refrigerator it can run both of them at the same time and then i have the um 
a generator that's 500 watt, which would be used to keep, um, you know, laptop, cell phone, those type of things um, charged up. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was the Geek app, guys. The Geek app um, has a lot of survival supplies. Even um, like, what do you, camping book bags, lights, like all the solar stuff I'm talking about. And they're at decent prices. So please look up if you can on the Geek app if there's things that you still need. Ashe Homestead in the hood. Ashe Homestead in the hood. Welcome, babe. Yes, yes, yeah, that's I what mean, I have, I mean, Uncle Al. I have an Eco Flow. It's I a see 700. Me. I think I see how to say earlier. I have, hey, Bronze. Oh. You said no. Tammy. Tammy's yeah, in here. Yeah, Tammy just tried. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Yes, I have Hi, the Tom. um the EcoFlow seven hundred with the um the connector. The other the it has like a extra battery that you connect to it to make it fourteen hundred. Yeah, my. But um, when whatever that. appliance would you want to um, you know, everybody might know about this. Where is my camera? Mm -hmm. Where you plug this in. If you don't know how many watts the appliance that you're using, you plug this in and then plug the appliance in. And up here, we'll read you and tell you how many watts your um, appliance is using. And I think that's the thing where we don't realize how much energy we're using on a, even one appliance is using on a daily basis. Um, I was asked, um, she don't mind me talking about it. I'm not going to call her out, but she asked me when I did the, um, the, um, one, I'm not one, um, the cast nine Wednesday, um, SHTF, um, meal. And I had, I used the, um, energy battery, which is 1500 and I plugged in my, um, ring light and a hot plate, um, and she asked how long I had the hot plate running. But um, or when it's when something is off, there's some things that may draw energy even when it's off. And there's some things that um don't. Just so happened the hot plate did not draw anything while it was off. But as soon as I turned it on, the hot plate was um, running at 832. That's high to try and run something that high for a long period of time. And the battery is only 1500 watts. So um, to try and do anything that that may be take a long time to cook, the battery most likely will probably die on you before you even get it finished. Hey, hey, let's, let's shout out Mrs. Queen. Hey, Mrs. Queen, sweetie pie. Hey, um, Jeannie. Gwen had a good question. So she said, what is it called, Bougie? What, what, what is, is the, what called? I believe she's talking about the the system that you're using. Ask that again. Battery. What is what called, Hudson? Yeah, but if you have any, uh, oh, the plug. This plug. What is this plug called again? I need to put my glasses on. I can't see a darn thing. What's this plug called, Uncle Al? It's a electricity, watt meter. Electricity monitor. Happy Max. That's what it. That's what it say on here. Put that in. Okay. Um, okay. Hudson, that should come up. Electricity monitor. I'm looking it up, y'all. I'm gonna share it in the chat. If you have, if you want to run something, anything with a heating mechanism, it's going to, those things run like a, a, almost, you see that small plate and I only had it at five. So remember, just like your stove, those heating plates, they, that heating plate I had goes up to 10. So the higher I go, the more it would use, the more watts it's going to, going to use. Just so happened it did great at five. I, I, well, I had it on six, but I was able to um, 
was the electricity money. No, those things is probably should be less than 20 bucks. Yeah, I just found it. I mean, it should only it should be less, it shouldn't be no more than 10 bucks. I can't I had mine for a while. I, I don't recall what I paid for it, but it um, should be less than twenty dollars. Okay, so I just found it and I'm trying to share it, but the file is too big, so hold on. Stardust is going to find a, a search link to put it in for you. Um, so, like trying to run a space heater, no bueno. Mm -hmm. No bueno. It's better if you must have heat is to get a Mr. Heater, and you got to get propane canisters. The, I believe they're the five, five pound propane, propane canisters to go with them. Or, um, you know, like I said, be careful with the propane um, blankets, wool blankets. Those, those are the should would be to me the best things to do first mm -hmm. before you go to the propane heater. But trying to run a space heater or the the you know the, the electric blanket that would be a good thing. But you're gonna need you you're not gonna be able to do it. You plug in a space heater that if it lasts an hour. Unless you have a big, a very big, big um, battery to run that. Those things, they pull a lot. Ooh, me. Amazon right. has one for $17.99. That's a nice one, too, but I found one for a little bit cheaper. Hi, Miss yeah, Shirley. They, they, they all have different um, prices. Hi, Miss Shirley. Hello, Miss Shirley. Hold on, hold on, um, no, hold on, babies. I found one just a little bit cheaper, y'all. Anybody have any questions about the generators? Because I know that in particular is um, those those things are very confusing when you when people are talking about or understanding what they can and what they can't do. Um. Ooh, the file is too big, you guys. Um, I'm gonna share it on my community tab. All right. Um, the um food we all know about food. Everybody should be stocked up with their food. Stock your food. Um, try to I get. I always stuff. suggest go to Aldi's. Go to Aldi's if you have an Aldi's. Aldi's is so cheap, and you can get some great canned food. You can go get like a whole tray of string beans for less than five dollars, and you're getting a probably whole about case. a dozen. Yeah. A case. Mm, of each green of each vegetable. Yeah, it's really dope. Um, yeah, get stuff that um you could just open up and use, like peanut butter and jelly, mm -hmm. tuna fish, stuff where you don't have to cook to use that first. I would use that first. I was asked also, wouldn't it be better to use the food in the refrigerator freezer so it don't go bad? But because I have a way to keep those things running. No, but um, trying to cook those things, like I said before, on a hot plate would, um, the, it, the, to me, the battery wouldn't last long enough to try to cook something raw. It would take too long. So something quick, like warming up a soup or cooking the oodles and noodles, like mm -hmm. I did, would be a better bet if you're going to use a hot plate in your battery, something that would probably take you less than 15 minutes to make because I use, you got to think, um, I use 33% of the battery. So when, you know, in these situations, you want to conserve, you got to start serving your, your um, energy and doing those things that, you know, are a priority, especially um, if you don't know how long the um, lights and stuff is going to be out. So I, for me, this is my what I would do, I would eat stuff that that I don't have to use any energy to make, like peanut butter and jelly, tuna, and um, stuff like that. Stuff you could just put together. Yeah, that makes sense. And then you don't have to worry about like your peanut butter going bad on you. Now, this is what I want to know. If you're up north, well, not no. If you're up north, this is. A suggestion make sure you have a large cooler because mm -hmm. if your electricity goes out and you can put your cooler outside and you can put your refrigerator items in your cooler you know as long as there's snow on the ground and the temperature is below freezing right and you could also put that cooler 
on top of the snow and put the snow around it mm -hmm. to keep it um to keep it cool mm -hmm. keep the stuff the contents in it cool also um i seen somebody mention i don't um about having like i have bags of ice in my freezer i need to put the um uncle al talked about that in his video putting a um water bottle in my refrigerator freezer so that will help keep uh, the uh, did i say that right uncle i'll put the water a water bottle in the freezer and let it freeze to help keep the things in the freezer cool when the lights are out and what i um realized also too even though the lights go out i have had um a couple of power outages since i've been here in this apartment uh -huh. And I've had one that went for about, this is, you know, what I, what happened to me. I'm just not suggesting it for you. I did not have to put, plug up my refrigerator and the power outages was around, it was a little over four hours. So your, your refrigerator and stuff will be okay from what I experienced mm -hmm. at least six hours in. The first six hours there's no need to panic um but i suggest not to go in and out of the freezer or the refrigerator so that you know it could pull in whatever coolness that there is but after that time everything was fine in my refrigerator so you don't really need to panic as soon as the lights go out and you think you need to plug in your refrigerator or freezer into the um into your, um, if you have a, a generator or whatever the case may be, it should be good for that um, amount of time. You watching you know, uh, the chat? I put certain yeah. things in the in my garage. That was a bad idea because I did not have an AC unit for the garage done yet. My flour, oatmeal, another package had bugs. Okay. We have to have to use the snow as a fridge before it worked. Okay, cool, Kiki. Yeah. She said it worked. That yeah. putting the the what it was the um. Oh my goodness, what is going on with my head today? Yeah. You said the cooler. Yeah. <laughs> Put the cooler in the snow and pack the snow around the cooler. So make sure you have a um a cooler to put your refrigerator items. If it go past, if you don't have uh, a generator to plug your refrigerator. And please be careful with um, the gas generators and stuff. Those things are not supposed to go in the house. Please, please, everybody be careful. There's so much people, um, you know, got hurt and stuff with putting these things in their house and stuff. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna help Miss Queen come up with a solution for that because a lot of folks need to understand that too. But before we talk about that with Miss Queen, I want to also mention this. Make sure that you have, um, you know, your dripping water. If your temps go down below freezing, that you have water dripping in your sinks. Because you'll freeze your pipes if you don't have any water flowing through your pipes. Okay. So if your temp goes down below freezing, always make sure you have your pipes dripping. Hey, triple threat. Hey, TNT. Hey, okay. Sis. We have here confirmation about not having a panic with the refrigerator. Um, my Renaissance grandma said refrigerator and freezers will hold cold temps for three days without going yeah. in and out of them. Very That's nice. But she said mine was for about two days in the in the freezer as long as I didn't mm -hmm. open it. You can use your freezer as a cooler if you can't if you if you can get ice. Michigan had a blackout years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we confirm that about not having a panic about your food and stuff going bad. Um, I want to address what Mrs. Queen was saying because this other people need to know that information on where I miss, her food. I miss um, it. You read it out, sis, when she said she put certain oh. foods in her garage, and that was a mm -hmm. bad idea because she didn't have AC unit in there. Okay. And the flour, oatmeal, and other packages wound up having bugs in them. So, okay. How should you store your dry goods in a heated situation? Now, that's a good question because I haven't thought about that. So, when it's hot? Yeah, because if you put it in your, 
garage and you don't have any AC in there, well, it's that's the humidity no, that's, that's a, messing up. No, no. Um, so right, how do if you, you don't have, have to, if you if your electricity is out and you don't have any AC? Oh, and you in 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 the heat. Mm. How do you keep your items cool and you don't have access to the refrigerator and stuff like that anymore? Like, didn't they used to back in the days dig holes in the ground to keep things cool? Um, I think like this is the thing when you are in certain areas. I think you should have certain things because of the area that you're in. Like how I said, um, I don't suggest people using the propane because of, um, you know, the, how bad that could turn out. But mm -hmm. like where Kiki is at upstate New York, it is brick out up there. So they might cannot, they might have to do something for heat because it, you know, down here is not as cold down here as she would get up there, up north. So it's a, so it would be suggested that they have some kind of heating or even like people like you're saying that's in the, that's hot, like in the desert and stuff. I think it would be best for those people to have some kind of generator so that you can at least plug an AC in. But if you can't get to a generator, you can't afford the AC. You know, I mean, I'm I'm not trying to make stuff so. I know what you're saying, but um, ooh, that you I I never that. um somebody in the chat. If you got a yeah, if you have a basement, it's cool in the basement. Yeah, yeah the basement exactly. always stay cool. You could have that stuff in but the basement. If you're basement, in an apartment but... and you ain't got no basement. What's the alternative? You know, so these are the things that if, you know what it might know not. It might tonight, not be. But, uh -huh. but real quick, if we don't know the answers to it tonight, y'all be pondering upon it. You know, and mm -hmm. bring it to the table the next time you're somebody live. You know what I mean? It's okay if we don't get the answer right now, but just like let's work on it though. That's something. Um, Uncle Al said a swamp cooler. I never heard of that, but um, I think that's like a uh, sump pump. I don't know. It might be like a sun pump. No, no, no. A swamp cooler is what they use in the desert, like New Mexico and stuff like that, in order to cool the house. That's what that is. Yeah, I have triple heard said that. triple threat said in a closet in the back corner. That's that's I in my room. My closet is like that. That's that closet that stay yeah. cold. Yeah. It could be a hundred degrees outside. You walk in that closet and you would think I have an AC running in that closet i have a closet that's like that and i'm i'm in an apartment and i don't run i don't run central air and i don't run the central heat oh I, that's the thing i was saying too um about practicing to turn off your your uh, you know your central air and your central heat to see how cold it gets in Shoot, your how about this? Turn off your breaker. Just like have a whole drill. Just do a drill where the breaker is off. You ain't got no electricity in the house for the whole day for 24 hours. What you gonna do? You gonna have a shorter bill. Now that'd be a good thing, but you also gonna learn some skills too. So I I was in this apartment for seven years and I never ran the central heat or the central air. Um I don't do good with AC. I get too cold. Um, so what we do is we use space heaters and, uh, and it's only a two bedroom apartment. So each room has its own space heater. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't run all the summer, the apartment that I'm in, I would consider a basement apartment. It stays mm -hmm. cool for me. Mm -hmm. I don't need to run anything, not even a fan. Um, I stay mm -hmm. cool. This apartment stays cool enough for me where I don't need AC. Mm -hmm. Or even I haven't run ran my um fan in my room yet. The apartment has been that stayed that cool for me anyway. And in the winter, um I have a space heater, but you know, I'm I'm going through the changing. So sometimes I have my own personal summers and um <laughs> even the heat is um <laughs> even the heat the heat is is too much for me. So I know how cold it can get in the winter time in my room because I have slept with no heat on. Um, just uh, uh, what they call what I just said the um, no heat blanket. 
not a heat and blanket. I just use the um, fleece one. Yeah, the fleece. Mm-hmm. I have a fleece blanket on my bed. And what I would do if it get too cold, the idea that I have is I have a fleece blanket. <laughs> oh, my personal summer. Yeah. <laughs> um, I put the fleece blanket, one fleece blanket over on the bed, over uh-huh. the sheet, and I lie on top of that because uh-huh. that I've noticed will keep from, you know, when you get in your bed and the sheet is freezing cold, cold yeah. I notice if you put a thin, a thin fleece blanket over that, the bed won't be cold like that when you when you get in that fleece blanket won't be cold like your your sheet would be and then you're uh, even selling fleece sheets now or, or now that i don't know if i could I do that i, I think i will wake up sheet. in a, a it's puddle a, it's of a, it's water a, it's a if i do that fleece, but it's not an itchy fleece not itchy they, I got, would they be, got like winter sheets now that you can get for i've seen them but for me, I think I would be too hot with my personal sum. I probably work up. Bro- 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 Maybe that's a puddle of water. <laughs> <laughs> Look, real quick, I wanted to go back a little bit in the chat because Happy Max said if you have a boiler, drain it because it'll burst pipes and the it'll ruin the boiler itself. Now that's when we were talking about, you know, having the water drip into your pipes. If it's freezing temp, so make sure y'all pay attention to your boilers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the hot flashes. Yeah, put a space blanket on the mattress. Okay, that's a good idea, Uncle Al. Yeah, um, even if I know everybody, a lot of people are like, "Oh, they're not selling mylar bags anymore." They do have. Not necessarily the mylar bags, but they have the recycled paper bags. Wouldn't those be a, a good backup if you can't get the mylar bags to store your dry goods in or no? They seal too, like the mylar bags. Would those be good? I don't know what you guys think of that. Okay, what was the next thing? We talked about the snow and having your shovels, even if you're not in an area that snow, because we have some areas that don't get snow on the regular and they got mm-hmm. snow so let's be prepared for even the stuff that we're not used to <laughs> just just be prepared for it have your shovels and stuff um ice melters uncle Al said water heaters freeze too yeah we yes. gotta learn how to d- d- drain those things yeah so um any of you guys that have that information hey sit some soil babe any of you that got, who have that information, if you have any videos like that on your channel, please go ahead and drop the link for that video in the chat. If you know anything about how to drain your um, your water heaters, how to drain your boilers, if you have videos for that, please drop the link in the chat. Where are you going? Sifton with soil. You're in. You're in Texas. I want a blue thing. See, this is not right. I want a blue thing. This is a blue thing. Some blue drinks. That's closed. Yeah, make sure y'all invest in those um those flood bags. We don't talk too much about the flooding, but there um there's a lot of flooding going on. The quick dams, those Mm -hmm. those are things that be good investment, and especially if you have a prolonged. Well, I'm in an apartment for those that may be in an apartment that may have a prolonged um, power outage. And I'm not sure. I was reading somewhere where you may could use your toilet and you may not. And um, it's um, good to have those flood things. So in case people who don't know, they cannot use their toilet on a power outage and back up everybody. That is not going to be cute. Um, those flood bags would be good to, you know, contain that stuff and and pick some of that, you know, contain it and soak up the water, so that you don't have to put your towels and stuff down on the floor. Hey, Andrew, and, um, so, um, I had um, mm-hmm. those and the um. Uh, shit. Um. I was saw I saw somebody coming on through. My, I'm sorry, boo. I done threw you off. 
they were, okay, I was seeing how Grandma Hudson was talking about how Kentucky had the bad flood. I was going to suggest also, and I know this might be like a lot for some people, but if you can get you one of those, um, get you a raft. Get you a blow up raft if you need yes. to. Yes. Stuff like that. Yes. Or, I'm looking um, into that. Not a canoe, but what's the other thing that people use when they go on down the river that they like to use? That they, it's like holds one person in it. I know what you're talking about, but um, yeah. the, the, like you said, a blow up, a blow up, you can blow up raft. Your stuff in there. If you if if you can't get in the raft and you can swim, you can at least put uh whatever you know family member that can't swim in there and whatever little personal items that you can throw on your back. If you've got your bug out bag, you know what I mean, and you can throw that in that raft and um. Yeah, I'm here. Kayak. Thank you, Happy Mac. Thank you, honey. A kayak. Hi, James. How you doing, buddy? Oh, um, Uncle Al, I'm I'm what I call in the, the basement, so that's why I know I'm gonna need that because I know it would get backed up on me. I'm on a lower level. That right there is important. We what my husband just said. Yeah, they have um. Though so they have this this um thing where you could actually put the water in it in the bathtub. It's made big enough. I'm sorry, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's a thing that you actually put in the tub and put the water. What it helps is it keeps the water clean. Yes. And it likely. comes with a, a pump where you yes. could pump the water out when you need it. So instead of the water just sitting there open up for you know stuff to fall in it or whatever, you could put this this um thing in the yeah. tub and um fill it up with water. Somebody says something. I mean, oh, Happy Mac said, "I'll I've never made a video, but I'll make one for draining boilers to help yeah. someone and save them the trial." So make sure you go over to Happy Mac. So when he or she put that video out, we could um see it. Thank you, Happy Mac. We appreciate you for that. Yes. Oh yeah, some of the little swimming, the little kids swimming pools. Yep. Um, Homestead in the hood said all all these have their summer swimming pools, and old stuff should be coming on sale too. Yep. A water bob, yes, TLC. The water bob, that's what that's called. To put in the tub. Hudson, get the get the water bob. That way it'll help keep the water clean. I think it holds two hundred. Is that possible? I think it's, do I have mine sitting on the back of the toilet so I can know where it's at and I don't have to dig for it in case um I have to put it in the um tub and fill it up with um bathroom bob on Amazon. I'm looking it up now so I can share the. All of the summer sports entertainment is on sale now everywhere to make room for back to school and Halloween. Yep. It's August. Everything, yep, all, all the winter stuff is going to come out now. So we actually are kind of behind the season. But figure it's still August. We we need to be ahead of the game. The stuff that's going on now, we need to stay ahead of the game. We can't wait until 55 gallons. Okay, thanks, Uncle Al. Um, we need to stay ahead of the game. We don't need to wait till winter to start getting ready for winter. We need to get ready for winter now. And then when winter get here, we'll get ready for the summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thanks for the water bottle again this time. It's in the chat. Okay. And we talked about having your matches and mm -hmm. candles, candles and uh, manual, manual, manual can openers and things like yeah. that. Yeah, make sure you have your manual tools in the house. Your can opener, um, the nice get the one that takes the whole thing off, where you don't cut yourself with the edge. It'll take the whole top of the can off. I like those. That's that bougie stuff. That's that pamper <laughs> chef, y'all. That's that. <laughs> I got one too. I'm gonna and even um get the get the old school um can over punch can up with the punch on a uh, you know like if you have a can of pineapple juice and it punches the hole in it 
get make sure you get those too yeah whatever manual tools you may need okay. my bad i was getting some more iceland with all that in your ears so oh you know what stock up on your medicine your mm. herbs start making your tinctures now your um mm -hmm. your cough medicines your um antibiotic drinks start doing that now because you know a lot of those take at least 30 days to marinate anyway and those of us that don't do all of that stuff get your black tea your green tea mm -hmm. your chamomile and tea box teas in the box get um as far as food is concerned um the powdered drinks would be good um yeah Oh, that's cool. I never knew that. I never heard that name, Uncle Al, a church key. That's what that puncher is called, where you um, punch the can to pour out, like a, a pineapple juice can. A church, yeah, you said church key. Also start saving aside for those winter seed sales to purchase your medicinal flowers and plants. Mm -hmm. Anything else you guys can think of that you'll need? Anything else you guys can think of that you'll need? Um, Miss Shirley, Shirley said I'm old school, so all of her stuff is old. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the best thing. <laughs> this new stuff will break down on you quicker than you know. I don't think that there's mm -hmm. anything else. We're talking about being on here for about an hour tonight, you guys. It's been about mm -hmm. an hour. Um, you guys I'll added some great information, too. I love the Even the flotation mm -hmm. devices with the um, blow-up beds, like that simple stuff. We're going and getting the kids pool. Yeah, and the, right the, the, the like, um, whether it was some um, homestead hood said the, um, the kiddie pools. Because you could you could have to blow up kiddie pools like how you were saying to put your stuff in something. So the, the blow up kiddie pools is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Well, this is why we need to have these talks so that we can give each other ideas and think of scenarios that may happen so that we could be prepared for them because we have things are happening that we um, don't ex are not expect them. Finding like-minded people around you for when, no, for when um, you need help, but come friends with somebody like, that's an electrician, plumber, carpenter, mechanic, as well as think about taking a course yep, in yep. those. Yep. And remember, you are your first responder. You are the person who's gonna respond to your emergency first. So make sure you have everything to attend to your emergency. Most of the time, hello, growing out the box. Hi, Robin. Thank you. Most oh, of man. the time, um, hey, when these things the happen, you, your first responders is not going to be able to get to you. And, and sometimes you may be somebody else's first responder. Okay, so that's another thing. Stock up on your first aid supplies. Stock up on your first aid supplies. We did not bring that up. Make sure you got plenty of alcohol, peroxide, uh, band-aids, things that you might need as a splint. Um, make sure that you have thermometers. Mm-hmm. Um, Night, Uncle Al. Thanks oh for coming in. We yes, appreciate all the uh, input. Thank you. So much. And we're looking forward to that video. Oh, and another thing, too, um, as far as your food storage goes, you all know with the pandemic, there's a lot of places right now that are giving away free food. They don't care about your income. They don't care about where you live. Go and get the free food while you can, too. Stock up on that. Hit up the food banks. 
um game game nerd mom hey did i say hi to her <laughs> i meant to game nerd mom she said def try to keep pool noodles to oops where did it go that jump um too, in case you don't have time to blow something up, they are ready to go just in case it's a flash flood too. You know, because you can definitely always like get some zip ties and zip tie, cut a pool noodle and zip tie it to something, you know, or have you some extra string on hand in case you don't have zip ties, you got to tie some things up. That's a good one. Okay, purchase some white duct tape. You can use that for Seuss's and pay attention to the bleeding because it's white tape. Never tear it or cut it. So if you need to, but not until the room, the wound, that's supposed to be the wound, is closing. Okay. Look up the medicinal properties of yarrow. It is great for trauma. Yeah, I got yarrow going in the yard. You know, um, if you can, yeah, definitely get you some of the basics. Like even for breathing, if you're having issues with, um, you know, colds during that time of the year, vitamin mm -hmm. C, vitamin C, vitamin mm -hmm. C, vitamin C, and rosemary. Like if you have mm -hmm. asthma, rosemary is a good one to have. You can just chew on it; it helps. And get get all of that stuff now. Don't mm -hmm. wait till the winter get here. We want to be ahead of the ball. Ahead of, ahead of it before it comes. Um, Kentucky just got their butt kicked and they getting ready to get more rain on top of the flood, that the flash flood they already had. Mm -hmm. That's why we said, yeah, get the get whatever you need, the flotation devices, get you a kayak. I mean, get, uh, um, who was it? I think yes, it was. Yes, Robin. Yeah, because you you go into a different. Um, I'm sorry, Star. You go into no, a different. Okay. She said it's tough to determine how we would react in an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. So get your essentials now. Yes, you go into a different state of mind when when something happens. So if you already have everything ready and you know where it's at, that will take half of that. You know, and start practicing with your thing. That's what Boosh mm -hmm. keeps saying to me. Yeah, practice with your things. But it was triple threat. She said she's got life vest. You understand what I'm saying? Get life vest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's a good idea. Especially if you got little people. Uh-huh. It's tough to determine. Okay. Make sure you put most of these things in a bug out bag for ASAP exit. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's another. We're, we're going to try to make, not try. We're doing this as a series and we're going to talk about different things for um, being able to thrive during a power outage or whatever kind of emergency we um, find ourselves in and mm -hmm. being prepared for it. As you work on getting your health together, find out homeopathic medical foods and herbs that will do the okay. same as your medication, such as green leaf, vegetables, or blood thinners. Yeah, foraging. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why they tell you don't eat them while you take the drugs. Okay, that's a, you know, but consult your doctor. <laughs> yeah. And make sure you have a list of all your medications somewhere and emergency phone numbers. Have all your, and you know, if you need extra chargers. And if you can get, like I said, some kind of solar bank that has at least what you say about 200 watts bougie for for what are you trying to power it, uh, it your your cell phones you know minor cell oh yeah I, I, yeah i would say 200 between 200 and 500 yeah according to how many people if it's just you probably 100 watt would be good if you got according to how many people is in the house and how much stuff i know um laptops draw a lot to recharge um we really need to plug these if you have a generator plug your stuff into the generator so you can see how much wattage a laptop draws a lot of of energy to um charge 
So uh, make sure when we talk about practice, this, these are the things we need to do. Stuff you, you got in boxes and put away, take those things out and um, check them. Make sure all the parts are there, you know, at least run it and, and put it back in the box so that you don't want to take it out the box and then find out something missing or something not working properly. And um, yeah. practice practice with your preps. Once in a while, take them out that, um, you know, on my channel, that's what my channel is about is practicing um, with the things that, with the scenario, what I think I, I would want to do if a power outage happens. So ginger is a natural blood thinner. What did Mona say? Learn how to forge to, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Make it a lifestyle so when it happens, you'll be okay and not panic. Uh, and before we end the stream, what about if you needed something for protection? To a pro. I mean, that, that's according to how everybody feels about to a, um, you know, triple threat. triple threat is a good person to go to. If you yep. have questions about to a situations and what would be good for you, I suggest you hit up triple threat, triple threat firearms and defense. She is very good with that information as um, far as like um, two-way stuff. She would be the Store, best person storing to go your, to. Your, storing your um, two-way things. She, she just did a live about that. So mm -hmm. all of that stuff. She's, she's mm -hmm. the best person to go to about that. Any two-way questions you have. Hit triple threat firearms up. Let me put a link in the chat. Everyone, including the babies, need to know and self defense. Go back to throwing dots and the ball through the hula hoop to practice aim with your children in the event they need to pick up something and throw it hey, even the baby, baby bottle can connect with the enemy's head <laughs> <laughs> yes triple hey. threat talk about that everybody in the house should be trained if there is two-way equipment in your house everybody should know how to use it properly and safely and, and, and even if you don't have two-way equipment in your house, you still should have training with your family on what to do in emergency situations. What to situations, do, period. yeah, in case something happens. You know, and then not only that, have have a couple of um, plans of your home drawn up and posted on in certain areas of the home, not just right there in the front door where strangers can see the shit, obviously. But, like, so that your children know what exit to meet you at or where to hide, you know what I mean? That's a part of the plan. So put it in writing for the children to, or, you know, put it in pictures, symbols and stuff, work with them. Okay, Urban Garden Chronicles. <laughs> Back in the day, it was glass bottles. Those would hurt. Them plastic ones, okay. <laughs> but I hope you guys um, got some good information from us tonight. Mm-hmm. See, she said she just got her bedroom machete sharpened. See, now that's me. I got machetes. I got all kind of axes. I got knives. I got guns. Like, I love all my stuff. I'm, I, I got bats. I got bow and arrows. We are not allowed to own or possess any weapons, not even a pen knife. However, it does not mean we don't know how to disarm you and use your weapon on you. Where are you in New York? Homestead Hood. Yeah. Mm hmm. She's in New York. Uh -huh. Thank you, Robin. You have you have other stuff. You got um, pepper spray and pepper gel. You have those things also. You got a bat. You got that 
also. Oh, um, you can make pepper spray, you guys. I don't know. I, I made some. I don't know if I ever put a video up on the channel or not. But, um, you know, a lot of us are preppers, and some of us are growing food as well. Some of us have hot peppers growing in the garden. Um, okay. Get you a little spray bottle. Put you some hot peppers in your spray bottle. Put you some garlic in your spray bottle. Put you some water in that spray bottle. Good night, Hudson. Thank you for coming see. in. We're going Good to be night, doing see. this every you, Thursday. Man. So look out for us next Thursday. We'll have a different topic to talk about. Okay. She said it's from being, she's a, a, a right. Okay. I know that's right, sis. And hey, much love to them because they don't play. No, Thank you, Tasha, for coming in. We appreciate you. Thank One you day we'll, we'll we'll have a two way a two way discussion and have Tasha on the panel with us. Yes, to do, we'll that. do that. She said but she was going to say she was going to make her own pepper spray. Yes, yes, it's so easy. Make your own pepper spray, you guys. Um, the, the same time, nine o'clock. What time we started? Nine. Yep, nine o'clock next Thursday. And welcome, Martin Urban Garnet. Well, thanks everybody for coming Thank out. We everyone. appreciate you. Yes, everybody stay safe. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we don't know if there's going to be anything that happens as a result of what's going on overseas. But you know, just continue mm -hmm. to love on your family and hope for the um, best, and just be prepared for the worst. Okay. <laughs> yes. Good night. Peace, love, and light, you all. Ashe. Ashe.